five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with another episode of a Shaggy Life podcast. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you guys checking in. I've got a wild, gnarly, weird, seeing if I can make it work type episode going on tonight. Uh, so it is going to be a little bit different. It might sound slightly a little bit different. So instead of recording my audio for the audio podcast into my mixer, I'm actually just uh, recording both the audio and video on my phone, but I'm using my Rode microphone. So um, so the actual, just the audio podcast might sound slightly different. Uh, don't forget that if you are just listening to this on the audio, this is definitely going to be an episode that you want to go watch on the video. Go to the YouTube channel, Curtis Tucker, and check out the episode on my old neighborhood. And so um, a couple of weeks ago, I did the episode on my house there on West Broadway and kind of told about all of the parts of the house and everything. And then somebody suggested that maybe I should like uh, do a podcast about my neighborhood and show you all the different places on West Broadway. And then people could follow along on Google Maps. Um, and so I thought I would take that a step further. And I was actually going to go walk um, basically uh, along West Broadway and record on video and do the episode and then be able to point out all the hot spots that happened uh, back in the 70s, but uh, being in Oklahoma, it is always windy, and so uh, I figured the audio on that would be pretty hard, plus by the time I walked the entire way, it would be a really, really long episode, so I thought, well, why don't I record the podcast episode while I am on Google Maps, and so I've got the video going, recording me waving at you guys right now, and um, but then I've also, I'm going to screen record me going down Google Maps, so when I put this together, it'll be a combination of me uh, live here in the studio doing the podcast, but then uh, most of the actual video part of the podcast is going to be Google Maps of me showing you the houses and hotspots as I go down West Broadway. So um, hopefully I'll kind of describe everything in enough detail that if there's no way that you can watch the video version of this podcast, uh, that you'll still get a pretty good idea of uh, what West Broadway was like. But hopefully you guys will be able to um, go take a look. And I'm actually holding my handheld microphone. It just I'm at my at my uh, art table, which I use as a desk because I'm having to use my computer to do this episode. So everything's a little bit different. It's going to be kind of wild if I can get this to work. And if it works, uh, it could be pretty cool and we could do some uh, really fun episodes in the future. Uh, a little more editing on my part, but uh, that's okay. We'll see what happens. And hopefully I'm not talking too loud and causing this to um, clip. So... Um, Without being over at the uh, mixer, it is a little hard to tell. Um, although my little Rode uh, Wireless Go, they do kind of tell me if I'm clipping or not. Um, and it seems like I'm doing okay. So hopefully I'm not clipping into the yellow. But anyway, okay. So um, anyway, thank you guys for checking in. Uh, it is another episode of a Shaggy life podcast. You guys can hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. Don't forget you guys can go to curtistucker.com and you can see I will have this video on the blog uh, on a blog post. Now I probably won't have everything typed out um, and I don't know how long this episode is going to go but I'll have a little blurb a, a paragraph or two and then I'll have the video. So you can either go to youtube.com slash curtistucker or you can probably just go to the website, curtistucker.com, click on that blog post. I think it'll be titled something like, um, you know, going down memory lane of my old neighborhood or something to that effect. You guys should be able to find it and, uh, and then you guys can watch it there. But anyway, so this episode is going to 
basically take you guys on a trip down memory lane to my old neighborhood, which, uh, you know, I drive it almost every day. Um, it really hasn't changed a whole bunch. I would say maybe, maybe 15% of everything, uh, is changed and, uh, the rest is kind of the same as it was way back in the seventies. And so, uh, this will be a fun trip down memory lane and kind of show you guys where uh, where I grew up. And then this also, I think, is going to be a good podcast for me to be able to get some ideas and, and things for my book, uh, The Banana Seat Squad. So this will kind of be a really cool way of being able to look around the neighborhood and, and all the stuff that I'm going to be putting in the book. So uh, hopefully this podcast episode uh, solves a whole lot of problems. So anyway, um, I am going to get into it. And so I'm just going to keep talking. And then, like I say, on the uh, audio, it'll just, everything will just keep going. But on the video, I'll kind of be uh, flipping between me talking and then what I'm showing on the screen. And most of it's going to be what I'm showing on the screen. So uh, so I'm going to turn that on now. So that is recording now, I hope. I, it, I tested it and it works. So what I'm showing you now on the screen is the United States and a map. And if you look, when I do our podcast episodes, a lot of times I'll say coming to you from uh, middle America right here in Enid, Oklahoma. And so if you look... There's a yellow uh, star there and a circle, and actually Enid is pretty close to the middle of the United States. It's a, it's a little further south. Um, you know, I think somewhere up in Great Bend, Kansas, is actually kind of the middle of America, but we're not that far away. So, so Enid, Oklahoma, is uh, in the middle of the United States there. And uh, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit and show you guys exactly. If you don't know where Enid Oklahoma is, if you were to take the state of Oklahoma, you know, we've got the the body of Oklahoma, and then we've got the panhandle that's really skinny and, and goes to the west. But Oklahoma is kind of split right in the middle, um, going north and south by I-35, and then going east and west by I-40. And so if you were to divide Oklahoma into a four-piece cake, um, Enid is in the northwest section of Oklahoma, so we are west of I-35 and north of I-40, and basically in that whole entire area, Enid is the biggest city all the way out to the Panhandle, and so a lot of the smaller towns rely on Enid, and we are kind of the hub of Northwest Oklahoma. Right now we sit at about 50,000 uh, people. I think probably in the 70s, we were maybe probably around 35, 40. That's just a guess. And so basically um, to get to Enid, you know, if you were to travel here, we're, we're basically about two hours south of Wichita, two hours west of Tulsa, and around two hours north of Oklahoma City. And then if you go all the way out west, there's really no big towns. It's all uh, Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle, not really anything major out to the west. So, um, but uh, we're not too far from I-35. So anyway, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit and show you guys. So this, I'm zooming in, is Enid, Oklahoma, and we do have uh, an Air Force base. So here is kind of the look of Enid, Oklahoma. And, uh, if you're watching the video, you can see my mouse uh, is circling Vance Air Force Base. And so we do have an Air Force Base. It um, is on the south side of town, uh, really still connected to Enid, but uh, a little bit on the outskirts. And then Enid is kind of like the state of Oklahoma. We are kind of divided. Uh, you can kind of divide Enid into four uh, sections. We have Highway 412 going east-west, and we have Highway 81 going north and south. And so again, in Enid, uh, we I grew up in the northwest section of town. And so I'm going to keep uh, zooming in. And so this whole area here is kind of one of the older neighborhoods, or several neighborhoods, and it's the old-timey blocks. I mean, every 
every street is just a block from, you know, the next street. There's no winding streets. There's really no cul-de-sacs. It's just block after block after block. And so to kind of zoom in, right here is West Broadway. And so this, this is Highway 81 over here on the right. And uh, it's also called Van Buren Street. So all of our streets, our streets, um, the middle of the town is actually Grand. And then as you leave downtown, we go Grand, Independence, and then it's all President Streets all the way out to the west. Um, and so Van Buren Street became Highway 81, and that's kind of a big major artery in Enid, Oklahoma. So basically the very, uh, from our territory, um, Highway 81 and Van Buren is kind of our furthest east that we would go. And then all the way to the west, there's a set of railroad tracks. And I'm about a block. I was, I was, my house was the furthest west of everybody on West Broadway. And so I was a block um, from the railroad tracks. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on my block. And so my block actually was, is kind of divided, is kind of like a triangle because uh, half of my block is divided by the railroad track. So my house, uh, 1902 West Broadway at the corner of Broadway, West Broadway and North Johnson is this house right here. And so that's how close I was to the railroad tracks. And then I'm going to kind of show you, zoom out just real quick. Um, basically, the front of my house faced West Broadway the garage was to the north behind the house. And then if you kept going, there is the convenience store that I'm circling that was Fitzsimmons. And that's where we would get our Jolly Ranchers and get our eggs that we might throw on the weekends. And I would get ice cream and stuff there. And then this building right here, which is just kind of catty corner, maybe a couple houses from my house, was a, I believe it was a 7-Eleven way back in the day. And so, so this was my intersection right here at Johnson and Broadway. So I'm going to flip to a different view, uh, like I drag the little guy and then bam. So now the view that I'm showing on the screen is me standing at the intersection of, this is Broadway, going west to the railroad track. And then if I scroll around, that's going south on Johnson and this is going uh, east on Broadway, and this is going north on Johnson. And so my house was right there. Uh, and again, I showed you guys this house in uh, an episode about two weeks ago where I talked all about that house. And, and I'm going to go up to it a little bit, um, maybe a little too close there. Okay, so now I'm looking at my house, and it actually looks a lot like it did when I lived there in the 70s. I think the only major change is I think the shingles on the roof were probably replaced, but it was this kind of yellow. Um, right here where the porch, it has kind of a small concrete porch, and there's um, three, oh, I'm not sure what you call those at the moment, uh, just little brick things. There used to be uh, several bushes that kind of were right in front that you could kind of hide behind. And so what we would do is we would hide up here on the porch and behind these bushes and throw eggs and water balloons at cars that were going right here on West Broadway. And so I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, there's a little alley behind the house. And uh, this is kind of, this is the garage. And so when I lived there, there was a wooden picket fence right here that went all the way around this backyard. And there was a lot of bushes right along, I mean, a ton of bushes right here where you couldn't really see into the backyard. And then a bunch of bushes towards the back of the backyard where you couldn't see into the backyard. And right there in the corner, right here where my little arrow is on the screen, um, that's where we, Staten and I would kind of have a little fort and, uh, you know, that's kind of where we would hang out sometimes. And so, and then the garage doors are the major difference of when I lived there. Those, I believe, if my memory is right, um, those doors were sliding doors. And actually, 
So if you wanted to go in the left side of the garage, you would slide the left door behind the right door. But if you slid both doors, so the middle of each door was in the middle, it would leave a gap on both sides. And so that's where, so this is where I would skateboard. I would skateboard into the garage, go through the garage, and then come out and go. This was kind of where I circled and played rollerball and everything. And then this was the garage where Staten and I uh, put on magic shows and the neighborhood kids would come in and pay us a quarter. Now, all of these bushes were actually there. These I've got an eight millimeter of me and Staten in the mid '70s skateboarding on this street, and uh, all these bushes were there, and so uh, it was not a very safe street to skateboard on because all of these cracks that you see in the street and the concrete were there uh, back in the '70s. So this street has not been redone since the '70s, and then there's where the um, 7-Eleven would have been. You could basically see it from my backyard. And then that street uh, where that stop sign is right there before that church is called Randolph. And if you went left, that goes, I don't know, eight, eight, maybe eight blocks to our junior high. Um, and so, but anyway, back to my house. And so uh, this was the, I had the entire upstairs and if you look and you see this little part right here, and I'm showing them on the screen, there's a little part on the east side of the house that kind of sticks out, and it gives this little, oh, uh, just this little narrow area on the roof. But that that was kind of a little concave area in my bedroom, and that's where I would slide my the head of my bed into that area, and my bed would match up perfect. And then and so that there's a little uh, little single unit air conditioner in the window now. But when I lived there in the seventies, there was no air conditioner in the window. And so, um, I would open the window and I would look out and I spent hours and hours and hours looking out that window. So, uh, again, uh, a lot more detail on this house. I didn't want to go into a whole lot of detail, but, uh, that tree was there. Um, and I believe, uh, I'm going to go in front of the house. There actually, I think, was another tree, which is gone. But there's the front of the house. These two little windows up here are where my walk-in closet was. And you can kind of tell that, um, see how low, it's just, the, it had a really low ceiling on it um, right there. And then this little, uh, there's a little area that sticks out from the house that has a bunch of windows. That was my mom's little art room where she would do art and crafts and stuff. So, so there's my house, my house. I'm the very furthest to the West on Broadway. So basically I would get on my bike, my banana seat bike or my skateboard and I'd come out my driveway and I would come down here. Now the first block leaving my house, there's a block in between my house and our grade school. And for some weird reason, uh, it does not have sidewalks on either side. And as far as West Broadway, between my house and Van Buren Highway 81, this portion of West Broadway is the skinniest. It get As Broadway leaves Van Buren and comes my way west, every several blocks it just gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And uh, I'll explain why it was fat um, at the other end here when I get down there. So anyway, so, um, so leaving my house, I basically had to get on the street and ride my bike at, or my skateboard along this street right here. And, uh, back in the seventies, when I was hanging out with all the guys on West Broadway, we didn't, I didn't really know anybody on this block, but eventually, uh, Steve Voss moved in to one of these houses. And I think it was this one. And uh, he eventually became my roommate um, at uh, the second, well, my, uh, at CSU, the, the third college that I went to. So, but at the time that we were playing Musclelands and hanging out on West Broadway, he did not live there. So, so basically I would ride my bike uh, a block and that would get you down here to our grade school. And this was at Lincoln. So Lincoln and Broadway, there was a little church uh, on the north side of the street, and then on the south side of the street was our grade school. Now, 
kind of get right in front of the grade school. Um, when I went to grade school here, uh, Staten and Brendan and I were all in the same sixth grade. And that was, so right before sixth grade is when I moved into this house that we just looked at. And so we were all three in the same sixth grade class. Uh, looking at the kind of the play area that's open right here at McKinley, you can see a lot of grass. When we went to school there, it was dirt. And over here to this right side, there was a, they had put in a blacktop. And so this is where we played dodgeball. And um, unfortunately, the team that had their backs to that wall um, they would usually get creamed up against the wall, and that's where I hit a girl in the head with a dodgeball. And I think that we had to, they made us quit playing dodgeball. And I can't remember if they ever let them start playing again or if uh, they never got to play again. And then this building here is a gymnasium. It was not there in the 70s. I believe there was a little, what we called portables. It was a little portable building, and it just had some uh, tables in it. And so basically, our classroom was right on that corner of the big brick part of the school. And then we would go all the way through the lower new brick part of the building and into this little portable, which uh, that's where we would eat lunch. So we had to take our lunch every day. If my memory serves me right, we'd have to take our lunch every day to McKinley um, to eat in that portable. We did not have a kitchen. Um, and then maybe, maybe my sixth grade, they might have brought food over from the central kitchen. And we, I can't remember if in sixth grade we ate, we took our lunch or if we had lunch that was delivered to us in that portable. I don't remember. But so this is McKinley. So sometimes when we would be out here playing dodgeball or kickball right here on this playground, um, hopefully the statute of limitations um, has expired. And uh, but Staten and I or some of us would sometimes uh, in quotes, accidentally kick or throw a ball onto this roof up here. And usually what when we did that was when we didn't have a ball uh, to play dodgeball at Staten's house. So then what we would do at night, let me, I'm going to zip around here on Lincoln, um, at night after class and everything. So, so this, here's a brand new part of McKinley too. This was not there. There was no building back here. But here is the alley. I don't think I'm going to be able. They they've added a lot of a lot of stuff that wasn't there. So basically, then what we would do is we would come at night, and if you look right in that area right there, there's a lot of uh, like heating and cooling units and pipes and things. We would then this gate wasn't here. This all this brick stuff was not there. This was all just dirt and playground. Um, we would go down the alley and get climb up on one of those, I think probably a heating or air conditioning unit. And then we only had a little ways to climb up some pipes and we could get on the roof and we would get those dodgeballs and throw them down and then uh, take them to Staten's house and play uh, trampoline dodgeball with them. So Staten and I are going to donate um, some gym equipment to McKinley here one of these one of these days to make up for that. So uh, we need to do that. Uh, going a little further uh, here on West Broadway, right across the street from our grade school, this little house right here was my mom's best friend. So Dottie lived right there. Um, she was only a block and a half away from us. So my mom uh, spent some time with her and knew her really well. And then I'm going to go to the corner, the next corner. Uh, so the so McKinley uh, took up the whole block, and the main building uh, was over here. And our sixth grade class was right there in the corner. That was Miss Mrs. McKinley's class. And so again, in sixth grade, that's where Staten, Brendan, and I all had class together. And then Jason and David, who were in the fourth grade, were somewhere probably upstairs or somewhere else in the school or maybe at the other end. I'm not sure. Um, the, the major change here is that when we were kids, 
in the 70s, there was lots of shrubs and bushes surrounding the school. I mean, you could hardly see this this bottom brick area because there were so many bushes and, and little shrubs and stuff. And then we also had a metal pole, rail pole that went all the way around the school that you could uh, sit on and swing on. It was maybe three foot uh, about three foot high and it went all the way around all that's been pulled up. And then of course, where all these kind of handicap, um, uh, ramps are these, that was just curbs. So we had to jump our, um, skateboards and our banana seat bikes off of these curbs, uh, and go. And so then, okay. So that's, uh, the, that was one block away from my house. So then the, we got another block basically in between our grade school and Staten's house. So I'm still heading East and then right along here, uh, one of the kids in our class, um, David Glaze, he lived in one of these two houses. I think it was this one. He lived there. And then the Jaleskas lived right here in this house. And for some reason, um, they just never were included. They never came down and played in all of our stuff. So even though we did know some kids, uh, I think David might have lived in that one. Um, even though we knew some kids there, uh, they these kids just didn't play for some reason. So as, as you can tell, it's kind of a middle class neighborhood, uh, a lot of bungalows and then a lot of uh, two story. Uh, the, another thing is there was a lot more trees like this one, uh, old oaks. We had lots of oak trees and a lot of those are gone. So there's definitely whoops. Why did that do that? Um, there's definitely not as many um, trees uh, and you can kind of tell these are newer trees. So they've tried to uh, start replanting some trees. So those are shorter and newer. Uh, that's a cottonwood, I believe. And um, so this, we did, for some reason, we rarely ever went down the sidewalk on the north side. Um, it was always over here on the south side. And one main reason is because oh, right here is on the next block is Staten's house. So um, if you're watching... There's kind of a weird little area here where Google Maps goes from like one season, probably winter, uh, to spring. And so, so when we were, so this is Buchanan. This is West Broadway and Buchanan, and it's 1523 West Broadway. And so this is where Staten lived, and this side street is Pierce. And so when we were kids in the 70s, basically from Broadway and then that next street down there is uh, Maine. This street, Pierce, in between was dirt. So this was all dirt when we grew up in the 70s at Staten's house. And so Staten's house is a white stucco, um, kind of Spanish-looking house. It's got a kind of rounded archway-looking uh, areas, on a big, big wraparound uh, front porch, which is concrete. And so this area right in here at the corner of his front porch. We played a lot of Foursquare in there. And then Staten was lucky enough, too, that he had the entire upstairs to himself as well. And so his bedroom was where all those little windows are. And then there was a um, a guest, a small guest bedroom right there. And then these uh, go down, down the stairs. And so um, this wooden fence was not there. It was a chain link fence. And I'm going to go down Pierce and show you guys. This tree was there. This was a dirt. Um, and then this was Staten's. Like I say, this, uh, there was a stairway that went up and then there was kind of a landing. And then that was a guest bedroom and then Staten's bedroom. So when we would jump on the trampoline in the backyard, these windows right here, Upstairs is where we would put his speakers and listen. Usually it was uh, Kiss Alive 2 is what we listened to a lot. And then um, the trampoline was basically could have been it was moved around all over the backyard and you would see us bouncing up and down. And then because you can't see uh, very well from the front because of the trees, um, I noticed I'm going to zoom in on Staten's. These were again, these were Staten's windows. And then his dad put a bell out here on the back of his house up there. And so when Staten's, he had his own phone number, and when his phone would ring, that bell would ring in back, and so we would know um, that his phone was ringing, and he would run up and, and answer it. And then this, this kind of this white area, this is an add-on. This was not there when Staten lived there. They added on kind of a game room and a 
kind of a back porchy area, and that was not there. But uh, so this was Staten's backyard. This was Staten's garage. I'm gonna go back just move a little more so you can see it. So that is Staten's garage. That's where we built the famous haunted maze every Halloween. And unfortunately, the Google car does not go down alley, so I can't really... I think this could be my best view. So I'm going to zoom in. So this was the main part of the garage, um, the big part where Staten had his part of the haunted house. And then my part of the haunted house, those three windows you see there in the back, and the um, his garage really, really, really sloped down in the back. I mean, you literally could almost jump and climb up on the roof from back here because it was so low. So my ceiling on my part of the maze was really, really low, but um, there was like a kind of a divider right in there. And so this very last part is usually where somebody would be standing and scare kids as they came out this back. There was a back door right there, which went into Staten's backyard. And that's where the kids would come out of the haunted maze. But my part of the haunted maze was right there in that low part. And so, so that's Staten's garage where the haunted uh, maze was. This was basically the backyard where we jumped on the trampoline all the time. Staten's bedroom up there, right there, where we spent lots of time listening to music out that window. So that's Staten's house on West Broadway. So he was the next furthest down. Um, again, I'm two blocks further to the west. So now we're going to go another block. Um, and on Google Maps, it kind of greens up. And then... I'm going to go just a little further. Well, let me go back to Staten's house real quick, try to show you the front. Like I said, they planted some new trees, and they haven't trimmed them very well. And so you can't really um, see Staten's house too. You can't see his garage from the street because it's there, this big maple uh, with limbs is in the way. But his So this was the... Um, the kids would come trick or treat here, and then we would be standing right there and say, "Hey, come back here to the haunted maze." And so that's where the kids would go back there to the haunted maze. And so you go down West Broadway, uh, about halfway down the block, and then this house, this big two-story, this was Jack Baker's house, and Jack would play musclins with us like maybe twenty-five percent of the time, uh, not very often. And then right here on the corner was Cammy's house, and she was a twirler. And uh, we would kind of hang out uh, at her house sometimes. And then Steve Voss, who was my roommate uh, in college and lived at the other end over by me eventually, he dated her for a while. And so on the next block, we really didn't know anybody on this next block. So it was another block of um, con um, um, uh, blah, 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 blah bungalows and two-story houses on the next block. Now, Lisa Wheeler lived right there in that blue house, that two-story blue house right there. Um, you may have heard us talk about Lisa Wheeler sometimes. So she she did live over on that side, but most uh, everybody up until we get to David and Jason lived over here on this side. So we would uh, skateboard right there and ride our banana seat bikes right there on that sidewalk. And you go, so we didn't know anybody that lived on that block. So it was another block in between. So that's a block in between Staten's house and Brendan's house. So now we get to Brendan's house. And um, Brendan lived on the corner of Taylor and West Broadway. And again, these are all President Streets. And so this is uh, Brendan's house. And it looks, you know, it is literally a mansion. Um, it's got the huge four white columns out front. It's got the um, the railing on the first floor and the second floor and the third floor. Uh, it was uh, three stories high um, and then a full basement. It's got a kind of a brick wall all the way around the property. So basically where most blocks in our neighborhood on West Broadway had, I think... One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six houses. Brendan's block only had two houses. It had two mansions. And so um, this was the Knox mansion, and we called this one the Hurley Mansion because the Hurleys lived there, but um, I can't remember what it was originally called. And then uh, they both had tons of yard. And so right here where I'm circling, there used to be some really big bushes like 
those big, huge junipers or something. So that's where we used to hide. And um, we could hide in there and come out and do stuff. And then in Brendan's yard, you kind of see a few of these like big cedar trees. There used to be a lot more of those uh, in his yard. And this rail fence that you see in his yard, that was not there. There was never a fence um, in Brendan's yard. So I'm going to uh, go back over here to Brendan's house. Um, and so uh, it, he had a full wraparound porch uh, with tile. It was a tile porch. It was really cool. Um, and we would hang out, hang on those railings. And up here on the second floor is where the bedrooms were. And this was Carol, his sister. Well, his sister's room was there, Carol, and his brother Craig was there. And then Brendan's room was over here. And there's a door here on the second floor that you could come out. And then this is where, if it snowed really good, the second balcony would get full of snow. And we would get up here on the second balcony and throw snowballs at cars driving down West Broadway. And so, so now we're at the really the, the wide part of West Broadway. And so if you look, um, you can see that it is literally six lanes wide. So here's one lane, here's two lanes, and then there's enough room even on the edge for cars to park on the curb, which makes it basically a six-lane street. And so that's why it was so fun to play on this end of West Broadway because the street was just so wide. We could do so much stuff out here. And the reason that it was so wide is back in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, Enid had a trolley system and the trolley, there was a trolley track right here in the middle and that trolley um, would go down uh, Broadway. And then I can't remember what street it would turn on. It was either it might have been the next one, but that's why Broadway right here is so wide. Um, then they took out the trolley and it basically left it with six lanes. So so anyway, I'm going to go around to the, I'm going to go down Taylor to the side of Brendan's house real quick and show you guys. So this is the alley. Um, again, his entire house was like surrounded by a brick wall. Now this gate... Uh, this whole metal gate, none of this was there. That was all open. But what was there that's gone now is this was a driveway. There used to be a, a garage, a brick, two-car brick garage with an apartment above it right here. And our uh, Enid High art teacher lived there, Eldon Ames. And so I knew Eldon from way back in the 70s when he lived in that top floor apartment. And so this was a back porch um, again, uh, Brendan's, that's Brendan's room right there on the second floor. And then up there where that roof is jutting out on the third floor, kind of like on my house where my, uh, walk-in closet was, this was an area that was kind of, kind of a concave area on the third floor. And this is where they had their train set set up just like I had a train set set up at my in my closet this was where they had a huge board with a train layout on it up there on the third floor and I'm going to go back and so now I'm standing again back in front of Brendan's um, house again white mansion and so up here so basically when you came in the front door you would go a little ways and then there was a spiral staircase right after you came in the front door and that spiral staircase went all the way up to the second floor and it was carpeted up to the second floor and then it spiraled again all the way up to the third floor but it was wooden up to the third floor and then when you got to the third floor there was a door but that in the middle of this third floor which was pretty much just an open third floor there was no rooms it wasn't divided into any rooms but that spiral staircase, there was a circular wall right in the middle of the whole third floor that went around that spiral staircase. And that's where we would draw pictures and write our names and autographs and leave goofy messages. And so that wall um, lasted for decades and decades and decades. And I, I think I heard that the last owners of this house finally painted over all of our signatures and everything. And so, but I have been in there um, several times after the hedges moved out and took lots of video and pictures. So I have 
documented all of a lot of the signatures that we had um, that were up there. So also up there, was, it was a hardwood floor up there. I believe there was a pool table kind of over in this area. Uh, there was a train set over in this area, and then there was a record player up there. And it seems like the only record I remember being up there was um, American Pie, the 45, which we played over and over and over again. And I don't remember us ever climbing out those windows onto the third floor balcony. Um, I don't think we did. Now, uh, the Hedges kids might have, but I don't remember us ever, ever doing that. And so... Oh wow, there's a for sale sign. I'm not sure when they, when this was. Uh, you never know what when Google went by. Um, oh, it says April of 2013. So um, the house has had many, many owners over the uh, year. So, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to skip uh, kind of our Musculins area real quick. Um, but this is this was basically our Musculins block, and I'm going to run down to the other end to the far east end of uh, West Broadway. So you go down to the next block, and uh, this is the block after Brendan's block. We didn't really nobody know anybody on the south side, but on the north side, this was Jason's house. This was Jason Gilbo's house. He lived the furthest to the east, but only by, you know, a block. Um, David and Brendan were only a block from him, but this was his house. And let me try to get just a little different angle. And so uh, this is the driveway now. But when Jason lived there, this driveway was actually right here where the grass is. And the driveway went up by the edge of the house and then around to the garage in the back. Uh, for some reason, some owner um, at some point uh, wanted to have a pool put in right next to the house. So they put in a pool and added this brick wall and then moved the driveway way out here but again when Jason lived there this was all grass and the driveway was there but this was a big kind of a den tv room up here so this is where we watched a lot of Muhammad Ali fights that's one of the big things that I remember there at Jason's house and then also um, Jason's dad was the roommate of Barry Switzer when they were in college at Arkansas, and actually Barry Switzer helped Jason's dad get his job in Enid, and so there was lots of pictures, uh, family pictures up in this room that had the family and Barry Switzer in it, so um, they were big OU Switzer fans, um, and, and then the, the basement, this had kind of a full basement that wasn't, it wasn't a finished basement, but it was big, and that's where we would play Murder in the Dark, so basically we would go down uh, turn out the lights and play that murder in the dark game. Um, and then, so let me uh, continue on real quick down further east. Uh, so one block past Jason's house is Central Christian Church. Um, that's, Brendan went to church there. I think Brendan was the only one that went to church there. But this grass area, that sign wasn't there. Um, but this grass area is where we use, uh, for some reason, this was an area where we played kill the man with the ball. And so, uh, we would play a lot of football in this area of this church. And then the next block, which is the block that basically is next to highway 81 in Van Buren. If you look over here, right there, a block on that block is McDonald's. So that's, uh, basically two blocks from, uh, Brendan, Brendan's house and a block and a half from Jason's house was our McDonald's. Now, it did not look like that. It looked like the old timey fun um, Ronald McDonald type, and it had a a uh, kids playland and all that stuff. So anyway, so this was basically the furthest edge of, uh, and then if you keep going down Broadway, um, that's our downtown area. You can see the big high rises. All right, we have a couple big. Uh, tall buildings downtown. So now we're going to go back up Broadway, and you can see, like right here, how wide, it's just a huge, wide street. It was so fun uh, to play on. Uh, again, there's uh, Jason's house. And so basically, Jason just lived a block uh, from where we hung out. So this is the uh, this is where we played Musculins, and I think the reason we played here was because of this church. It didn't seem like there was ever—it was uh, like um, 
a church of science. It wasn't Scientology, but it was like the church of science or something. And so we rarely, if ever, saw anybody at this church. Now, when we um, played here, there was a tree right here, a big tree, and then there was all kinds of those juniper type bushes all over the front of those stairs. And then there was bushes along, um, I'm going to go down the side of the church. There was a lot of bushes right here by the AC units. So if you really, if you wanted to hide during musculins, um, you could hide in the bushes all along here. But the, the main thing to do, David Rathbun's house is this, let me, let's go look at that real quick. Um, so this is David Rathbun's house right here. And those stairs right there, and that, um, I don't know what to call those basically brick things beside stairs, that was home base. If that You had to have your hand on that piece of concrete, and that was home. So when you got caught, the first person, um, the person that was on base had to have their hand on that, and then the rest of the guys could literally just kind of stretch out and wait for somebody to come tag them. But that right there... Uh, was home base. And so he basically lived next door to the church. And so the church gave us a lot of running area. And so even though Musculins was kind of a combination of tag and hide and go seek, you didn't hide so much uh, as you ran. And so this was, so there was just a lot of area here to run. And so basically what we'd do is, is whoever we, we'd do, we'd put our dukes in, and it'd be the one potato, two potato, and then uh, the two last people that had their dukes in, they would be it. And so they would stand here on these stairs, and they would have to count to 100. While they were counting to 100, everybody else would run off. And basically what everybody usually did was almost everybody would run over here to the corner of the church and basically wait for them to start coming. And usually what would happen is one guy would come, down this way around the church, and then another guy would go between the houses, either on this side of David's house or on that side of David's house, and then go down the alley and try to trap everybody that was uh, hiding by the church. And so I'm going to take you around the church real quick. And so this was the alley behind. So what would happen is um, you'd, you'd be kind of standing here, and then once you saw them taking off to come get you, we would either hide in the bushes new guys would hide in the bushes and they would get caught. So the first two guys caught would be at the next round. So you, you just didn't want to be one of the first two caught. After the first two were caught, it didn't really matter. And so what we would do is we would run down here and then we would run down this alley. And um, there was basically three areas you could, and we never went on this side of the alley. We Our boundary was only David's side of the alley. So you could run down right there, and you go by David's, uh, the east side of David's house, you'd go to the next one, you'd be on the west side of David's house, and then there was probably, I think there was one other area we could cut through. And and so that's kind of where we played musculins, was all around this back area of this church. Um, we did a lot of skateboarding, uh, filmed that video, if you guys have seen that video from the 70s, um, we filmed it there. Uh, you, this is basically, we were skateboarding up and down those stairs right there. And so I'm going to go back over here in front of these houses. So this was where, um, this is where a lot of action took place on Musculins. So David's house was right here. Here was base. Uh, let's say two or three guys were caught. They would basically be standing right there in kind of a chain, holding their hands. One guy had to have his hand right there on uh, the concrete. And then in the 70s, there was a chain link fence that basically went from right here to right there. It, it didn't go like all the way down. There was, it, was a, it was a chain link fence that just separated these two front yards. Um, and it was basically open on both ends, which allowed us to run around it. So what would happen is uh, guys would be caught over here one of the guys that was it would stand like right here, and then the other guy would chase one of the last people around this fence. Uh, and then this guy going around the fence would try to break away and run by, and if he tagged the guys over here, everybody would be free and they'd have to start and catch everybody again. But So a lot of running and stuff happened 
kind of right here in this area, especially around this fence. And for some reason, and I don't know why, we never, we never, ever went all the way around this house. We never went to the very end of the block. And I think we rarely went um, through between these two houses. I think there was fences that we couldn't get through on these two houses. So we spent most of our time uh, playing from the church to these two houses. And this, this was the O'Neill's the O'Neill's house right there. Um, and I think there was two sisters. They were a little older that lived there. And then again, uh, across the street was Brendan's mansion. And the next door was the Hurley mansion. And the Hurley mansion, um, Mr. Hurley, was a doctor, but sometimes he would come out in the front yard and he and one of his sons would kind of get in fights right here. And sometimes we'd sit there and watch them. And sometimes the police would come, sometimes they wouldn't. So anyway, so there is uh, the block where we played Musklands, a pretty cool, nice, uh, fun church. But again, um, did a lot of uh, riding our banana seat bikes and our skateboards all the way around in front of this church. Um, a lot of skateboarding on the street because it was so wide. And, so, and then a lot of things that we would do, like I said, we would come over here to Brendan's and um, there was a set of bushes right here on this corner. I mean, big, those big bushes that went really tall, but they were so big that you could kind of make a fort in them. So we kind of had a, a fort area in there. And so like the one time that we went streaking, basically we uh, left these bushes and ran out here and streaked. And then uh, if we'd like Sometimes we'd pile big snowballs across the street. We did that there. Um, sometimes we would throw a purse out here on West Broadway with a string on it, and we'd be hiding in those bushes right there. And if somebody would stop to grab the purse, we would yank it um, and uh, run off. And then one time um, we were all just kind of standing around here, and, a, and we had um, pop, uh, pop rocks, I think, those things that you used to throw and when they hit something solid, they would pop and kind of explode. And so we had um, we had those right along here. And for some reason, some guy drove by and we threw a bunch of them at his vehicle. Well, we had had all we would we would basically ride up to Brendan's and dump all of our bikes just like all over the ground right here. Our banana seat bikes would be laying all over right here. Um, and one time when we did that, uh, this guy came back and chased us and we i think we ran off down the alley back here but our bikes were there so he picked up all of our bikes and chunked them all over the the yard and kind of messed up our bikes a little bit but um we we deserved it uh, and then you know when we would go to david's house um we'd basically ride in and just uh, all the bikes would just get dropped right there in his front yard these two trees we're not, I think there was some bigger trees there. I don't. Those two trees weren't there. Um, so that kind of basically is uh, West Broadway. That kind of gives you guys an idea. Um, like I say, this. So they've the new own, some of the one of the new owners put in a pool. This pool was not there. That slide and stuff. Oh well, there's the garage. Well, that's weird. Um, 2013. I'm not sure what year. So so from one view from the. So that's what's weird about Google Google Maps or Google Earth is if you're if you're at different points, um, sometimes things are different. So so from this view, oh see now the how now the garage is gone. That's weird. Because it still says the same date up there. So this is Brendan's house and and if you you can see the fence back there, so there's no garage. But if you go down the street, there it is. Oh, that's funny. Uh, there it is. So that was that basically was the garage, um, and then up here was the apartment where uh, Mr. Ames lived. And we never really did a whole lot in the garage, but yeah. So they tore that whole thing down. They were going to rebuild it, and uh, the people, the the family that lived there when they tore it down, never got around to building it back. That's so weird. So a little bit of magic there. If you guys get on Google Earth. Uh, from that view, if you go just like click twice and then it, I don't know, it is still there in that view. But if you go around to um, Taylor Street, 
you can see it's it was right there. It's completely gone. So that's kind of wild, kind of funny. So that was uh, Brendan's house. This was uh, this was basically where we spent just hours and hours. And like I say, there was uh, uh, probably a lot more trees. You could hear the um, cicadas in the summer. I mean, like really, really loud. I just remember all of these trees being full of cicadas and um, and being really loud. And then in the fall. Um, just lots of leaves on these sidewalks. Uh, you had to be careful when you were skateboarding because there was lots of leaves and, um, and stuff. So I'm going to, so basically what we do is, uh, play, I mean, until late, you know, again, we were in grade school and junior high. And so usually I'd say probably by 10, maybe 10 30, sometimes 11 on the weekends, if we weren't spending the night with somebody, um, we'd all start heading home somewhere probably between 10, 30 and 11. It was a pretty, it was a safe, uh, safe town, safe neighborhood. And so basically we would usually leave from uh, David's house. And so what would happen is uh, David would go into his house. He just walked up the stairs. Jason would go a block uh, to his house. And again, these two, the two that lived in these two houses were two years younger than Staten, Brendan and I. So they would go home. And basically, Brendan would uh, walk across the street. We'd probably walk him over there. He'd go up, you know, up to his house. And then Staten and I would kind of ride like mad on our banana seat bikes or our skateboards. We'd go this block, and then we'd get to Staten's block. And we'd be basically, these uh, sidewalks were not smooth. They had, you know, a lot of trees were would make them uneven, a lot of cracks and stuff. And so we'd get to Staten's house and I would drop Staten off and then he would take his bike in back and go inside. And so then I was on my own. Everybody was at home, cozy. And so I would basically ride my bike uh, on this sidewalk or my skateboard by myself. And I'd go another block till I got to my, the grade school. And then see how the, and then all of a sudden the street gets really skinny at the grade school. Um, and this was, this was, you know, when it was really late at night and I was a littler kid, uh, this was where it would get a little scary because I was kind of in between Staten's house and my house. And so if somebody was going to nab me, it would have been here. So I would ride like crazy along this sidewalk in front of the school. And then I had to go that last block in the street because there was no sidewalks. And I would ride like mad that last block just to make it home safely, go right into the garage, drop my bike off. Uh, we always went in the back. Uh, so my mom would park here uh, in the driveway. I don't think she ever really used the garage much. And then we would always go in the back door of the house. And, and again, the house looks a lot like it did it, this, like this area here where the kind of the shake, uh, are falling off the side that it, that was in a lot better shape. So, um, so there is our neighborhood, our West Broadway neighborhood in Enid, Oklahoma. And, um, so you guys hit me up at shags at shaggy I'm going to, uh, you want to go see mommy? Go see mommy. I'll be there in a sec. Letting my little mascot buddy go inside. Uh, so perfect timing there. Uh, I think we're at probably right about an hour. Um, that is my house uh, in the 70s on West Broadway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. You guys can get on Google Maps and you guys can kind of go up and down yourself. And uh, hopefully this all works out and it all looks good. And hit me up at shags at uh, shaggyduck.com if you guys uh, have any questions or comments about the old neighborhood. And appreciate you guys checking in. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, come on over to curtistucker.com and check out all the old blog posts there. And I just appreciate you guys. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you guys soon. See ya!